now that we've got the program running the way that we want it to run, the next thing that we're going to do is test it. Now, what we're going to be using with these programs is um, unit tests. So we've already written tests to validate that the code works. These are really helpful because you can run these tests and see if everything works. If it doesn't, then you can fix it right away. And you certainly can fix it before you submit your code, which is awesome, right? If you know ahead of time that it's going to pass the test, then you're comfortable that you're going to get a good grade on that assignment. So what we want to do now is run the tests. We're going to go back up here again, and instead of choosing main, we're going to choose main test. And we run it. And now it's going to run the tests. And this one will take a while to compile, uh, especially the first time that you compile it. But that's okay, just wait for it to compile, and then it'll tell you whether the tests ran and whether they were successful or whether they failed. On this particular um, code, we only have one test. So that's the option. But on some tests, we have a couple hundred tests. And so it becomes a big deal to be able to work those tests and to be able to use them. So I paused while it was finishing running. And here's what came up after it done. It said process finished with exit code zero. That's great. The code zero means there were no errors in the build and run part, and that's great. But that doesn't tell you that whether the test passed or not. Down here is where it tells you the test passed. There was one. Up here it tells you um, one test passed, one of one. And over here there's a check that says test results, and there's a green check. That's what we like to see. That's a test that worked. Now let's go make an error so you can see what happens when the tests fail. So if I go back into hello world.cpp and I say, oh, I forgot. Actually, it's really common to forget the backslash n. So let's go ahead and forget that. And we'll just save that and run it again. Now I can run main again if I want. I just have to go up here and select it from this menu and click the run button, or I can directly just go and run the test. So here it's running main, and it came up and it said hello world, just like it looks like everything's fine. So I'm thinking everything's good, and then I go in to run the test just to verify that everything's running good. And it goes through this build and compile process again. It won't be quite as long this time. I'm still going to pause while it happens. All right, now when it came up this time, it says test failed, one of one test. It said test failed here. It has a yellow um, X here instead of a green check. So we see all over that a test failed. And then we can scroll down here and it actually shows us um, what, what there is. So first it said, this is what you have. Write hello CS 1410 world and it ends there. And this is what the test was expecting. Now notice how all the text is the same, but the closing quote is down here. That's that carriage return. Remember we took out the carriage return right there? When the carriage return is there, it's actually part of the string. And so it's inside the quotes. So it's hello CS 1410 world carriage return. And if you scroll down more, there's a message says check the spelling and make sure you have an end L or a backslash end at the end of the string. So sometimes there'll be a message that gives you a clue, sometimes there won't be, uh, but it will always tell you whether you passed the test or not. So here we can get clues from that. We do know we didn't pass the test and we can get clues about what's wrong. So let's go back and fix it. Let's go ahead and put the backslash N here. Um, and run it again. Now I'm not going to run main again. I'm just going to run the main test this time. And pause it. And this time it came up again with green everywhere. All the tests pass. So there can be different kinds of tests, I mean, things that don't pass. Like you could just simply do um, a typo and you know miss one L or put in an extra L. So typos like that won't pass the won't pass the test. So whatever it is, um, if it's different than what was expected, it, the test will fail and it'll come up and say, "Oh, that test failed." And then you can go back and see, try to figure out why it didn't fail and fix it before you turn it in. 
And there it comes up and says, it, again, it, it failed. It tells us how they're different. This time we have the carriage return like we expected, but we have that extra L. Sometimes you have to look close to see what it is, that how they're different. But we do have the carriage return. Now this indentation here uh, actually isn't significant. What we're looking for is what's inside the quotes. So they're both the same. So again, we can just go fix it and run it again. And that's how you identify um, whether your code passes the unit tests or not.